from the cutting edge of anomaly research, you are about to experience the evidence with your host, 3D pioneer and image analyst with Mars X 3D, D.W. Gannett. Well, hello there, and welcome to episode number 70 of The Evidence. This is your buddy Dave over Mars X 3D. And just a reminder, this is a stereographic channel. That means you need to learn X3D viewing. Very simple. It's down below in the description. And this week we have some very interesting things discovered by colleagues of mine and a couple I've found too. Alexander Leah has developed some excellent uh, 3D software that you can download. There's a link in the description below and it will take any stereo pairs the NASA issues and it will automatically put it together in X3D for you. So uh, thank you Alexander for moving us a little bit further in the direction of uh, everybody participating. Anyway, we have a lot to look at today so let's dive into it. We're gonna start out today with something that I think is really unusual. Alexander Leah is one of our contributors at Mars X3D who's developed a program that automatically renders NASA image pairs in X3D. You'll find the link for the software down below. You can see the three curved marks inside the purple target in a place where the rover hasn't been. And of course, there are no other marks around it, just scattered pebbles. This is a case where getting too much closer doesn't really add anything to the detail. Nevertheless, let's do an inventory with what we've got. You've got the two curved indentations on the left being roughly parallel. A slight mound of sand lies between them as if pushed up by whatever made the indentations. Coming down from the top, you have four circular mounds sticking up all the same size and shape and in a straight line. Below them and following the curve of the two indentations, two more mounds stick up that are about eh, twice the size of the four smaller mounds. The bottom of the second mound ends in almost the same place as the two tracks. Moving to the right, the sand is pushed up between the second and third tracks, but no circular mounds are present. While there isn't a fourth track, the sand is pushed up to the right of the third track as if something was there to help make that happen. Now, maybe there's a simple explanation for whatever this is, something on the rover perhaps. But if it's a ground-based animal that made it, where are the tracks you would reasonably expect to see before and after this one? And if it was something mechanical, what was it? Are they the marks made by some kind of insect? This one has me stymied for now. Props to Alexander for a sharp set of eyes. Every once in a while, we'll get something that's close in to the rover, but you can't even see it in the context view, so it's pretty small. This is one pointed out by a person who calls themselves Lacey. Now he or she never extracts and presents their findings and the argument can be made that if you only mark something but do absolutely nothing with it, well, that's kind of a Kilroy was here non-effort. But hey, credit where credit is due. That sure looks like the letter E to me. It's kind of hard to ignore that crisp 90 degree block on the right as well, isn't it? Anyway, that glyph up on the left kind of reminded me of another one I ran across last year. See what I mean? Of course, it's not identical, but it has that same bas-relief form to it. Bas-relief means it sticks out from the background for my Iowa friends. We find numbers and letters and other shapes in the same format all over the place on Mars. I called this one Brick Plus, because this is another one from the same Gigapan where Lacey marked something but missed some other things right close by. 
Here you can see it up against the base of that vertical slab, coincidentally another E-shaped object. The shape is just too clean, in my opinion, to be natural, and I saw it as a center block with one side missing, but <laughs> I doubt that's what it is. This piece here sure has some interesting surface markings, in addition to that nice, clean 90 degree angle on the top left. And this doesn't really seem like a rock to my eyes. Again, with the clean angles, but especially that perfect rod sticking out of the back piece. Shokri Yaish finds some interesting things, and we're really glad to have him being part of our team. This one is interesting to me since it's from an early Sol, and as far as I know, it hasn't been pointed out yet. This is exactly why it's so important to have eyes on even the most anomaly dense oldies, because you never know what's going to turn up on the evidence roster. Even in the context view, you can see it clearly inside the green target. It's interesting to see the underlying structure to the right. Is this part of an ancient buried wall? And as you can clearly see, this bears a remarkable resemblance to the classic Egyptian Ankh. It's hard not to make the connection with ancient Egypt, especially with all the pyramids we found on Mars up until the present day. Even if it's just a chance fluke of erosion, it's still pretty interesting. Here's another example of my water moccasin corollary, where you find one, there's almost always another one nearby. While I was working on 748, I ran across this one, which is a little hard to see inside the target area on the left. Before we move in for a better look, I wanted to show how it seems to be part of what might be a wall. I love those 90 degree angles at the top and what looks like a slot cut into the overall structure below those angles. Look at the line work on that rectangular piece as well as the rest of it that seems to show carved elements. It's entirely possible that this represents some entirely unique erosion of sedimentary rock, but it's hard to escape the impression that these marks were intelligently made. <laughs> you be the judge. Let's wrap things up today with a recent find by my friend Jim West. Neville Thompson has been creating some amazing gigapans and gigamacros using the often neglected ChemCam on Curiosity. And it's interesting to note that NASA seems to spend less effort redacting the images from this camera. That makes them definitely worth checking out. Anyway, there it is sticking out of the cliff inside the green target. So, what do we call this thing? I settled on proto-vehicle since it seems to have two shielded compartments with what might be a windshield in front and then there's that barrier dividing the presumed passenger compartment into two equal segments. Let's move in closer. There seem to be markings along the side showing the triangular bracing we commonly associate with smaller airframes here on Earth. So, is this a flying vehicle of some kind? My gut feeling is that this is more like a pneumatic locomotive, the front part of a passenger conveyance that used to run in those pneumatic tubes we find exposed on the surface of Mars. Yeah, I know, just wild speculation. Then again, if you wouldn't mind showing me examples of similar naturally occurring structures here on Earth, I'll put my speculation back in the closet with Skippy. You don't want to know. Well, that's a wrap for this week. Thanks for stopping by, and uh, you know, if you have something you'd like me to take a look at, send it to me at the email down below with a snapshot and a link. Sure appreciate it. Meanwhile, this is your buddy Dave over Mars X3D. Be well. <laughs>